Hey, how's it going guys? Phil here, and this is a review of the Cafe Bellissimo by GE Semi-Automatic Espresso Machine and Milk Frother. You'll receive the espresso machine, four filter baskets for single or double shots, portafilter, stainless steel tamper, stainless steel milk pitcher, instruction manual and quick start card, pH test strip, two cleaning tablets, and a small bristle brush. The Cafe Bellissimo has a built-in bean grinder and measures 14 inches wide, 16 inches tall, and 13 inches deep, though keep in mind that you'll need several inches of clearance on either side and in front as well. The plastic exterior has a matte dark gray finish, while the control knob and handle on the porter filter have a metallic copper accent color. The group head and grinder dispenser are a brushed stainless steel, while the milk frother arm, porta filter head, and drip tray grill have a shiny, polished stainless steel finish. The base of the machine also uses the copper accent color underneath and in the cafe logo. Inside the drip tray are a few other accessories, so if we pull it out, there's a plastic tray in the back left corner with a plastic cleaning brush, a spot to store one extra porter filter basket, and underneath is a pin tool for clearing clogs in the pressurized porter filter baskets. While the shiny drip tray is a nice idea, it'll scratch up pretty quickly from regular use. In the drip tray is a red float on the left that'll rise up to indicate when the tray is full and needs to be emptied. At the back, this section is covered, though I'm at a loss as to what goes in these small compartments. The other thing to note is that when cleaning, be careful that the plastic pins holding the float on don't fall out, as mine were pretty loose, and I almost lost one down the drain while rinsing out the tray. The control panel consists of four push buttons, a copper toggle dial, and various LEDs. At the back of the machine is the removable water tank, and you'll need to remove a safety plug at the bottom of it before first use by pulling on the red tab. The tank lid opens on a hinge and tilts back, revealing a handle so you can lift the tank out easily. Though if the machine is stored under your cabinets, you may not have enough clearance and will need to pull the machine out first to remove the tank to fill it. The minimum fill for the water tank is about 20 ounces, or 2.5 cups, and the max fill is around 100 ounces, or 12.5 cups. When installing the tank, slide it straight down until it is fully seated before closing the lid. The top of the machine doubles as a warming station for your cups, since it gets warm during use, and this round indentation is where you can store the tamper. The bean grinder hopper has a removable lid with an airtight seal, and a capacity of about 3 cups of whole roasted beans. It uses conical burr blades for producing an even and consistent grind size, and the size can be adjusted by rotating the hopper from 0 for fine to 15 for coarse. Turning past this point allows you to unlock and remove the hopper for cleaning the blades. The outer blade can be removed by using the metal handle, by turning it counterclockwise before lifting it out. Then perform the reverse steps to lock everything back into place. When choosing a porter filter basket, there are two types, single wall, which I'm holding on the left, and double wall, which I have on the right. The single wall baskets are great for freshly ground coffee, but require consistent technique for perfect results, while the dual walled pressurized baskets are a bit more forgiving to variation. You'll receive both a single and double shot size of each basket for a total of four baskets. The porter filter has a 58mm diameter, so when buying accessories be sure to note the size. One thing to note is that the copper accent color is thinly applied, and can scratch off if the handle is bumped or scraped. On the bottom of the porter filter is a rubber foot pad for stabilizing it on your countertop for when you go to tamp the grounds, and there are two spouts underneath that dispense the extracted espresso. The filter baskets snap on quickly and easily into the porta filter, and when removing them, there's a small notch at the front that'll help you get under the basket to pry it up. The included bristle brush has a plastic tab at the back to help you accomplish this as well. The four buttons on the front are power, grind, single, and double. The dial in the middle can be set to dispense hot water on the left or steam for frothing and heating milk on the right. Prior to use, be sure to clean and rinse the water tank and bean hopper. Then place fresh whole coffee beans in the hopper once it's dry and turn the hopper to select a grind size. I'm going to start with 9, which is at the larger end of the recommended starting point for espresso. Slide the porter filter into the plastic holder under the grinder dispenser. For a single shot, 
press grind once. The grounds drop right into the porta filter basket, but can produce a tall cone shape. So be careful when removing the porta filter so you don't spill any grounds. The default settings produce about 11 grams of grounds over 10 seconds. For a double shot, press the grind button twice quickly. The LED will blink twice and the grinder will run for slightly longer, about 13 seconds, though this default only produces around 13 grams of grounds. The grinder can be a bit messy though, and some grounds inevitably end up on the drip tray grill. Once you've knocked down the pile, it's time to tamp. So place the porter filter with the foot flat against your countertop edge and press down firmly and evenly with the tamper. If you have stray grounds on the rim, you can gently wipe them off before attaching the porter filter to the machine. Then, with the porter filter handle off to the left, lift it into the group head in line with the unlock symbol, and turn the handle to the right to lock it into place. If you're finding that you need a lot of force to lock the porter filter or can't get it to turn all the way, this means you have too many grounds in the basket or the grind size is too large, and you should remove some or start over with a smaller grind size. Weighing your grounds can help you avoid this issue. Now place your glass under both spouts or two separate glasses under each spout if you want separate shots, and press the button corresponding to the number of shots you're pulling. Here I'm making a double. After a few seconds, espresso should start to trickle out and it should start off dark and gradually get lighter as you reach the end of the shot, which takes about 30 seconds. The shot pulled with the dual walled basket is nice and dark, with a thick and creamy crema on top, so let's give it a taste. Cheers! And that is a pretty tasty, plain espresso shot. Strong, but not overly bitter or sour. If yours doesn't come out just the way you like it, you may need to dial in the machine and adjust the grind size, amount of grounds used, water temperature, or even your tamping pressure. Most of the settings can be adjusted in the Smart HQ app, so let's set that up now. To put the machine in Wi-Fi pairing mode, press and hold the single and double shot buttons for 3 seconds until the machine beeps and the Wi-Fi light starts blinking. Then open the Smart HQ app and log in. Tap Add Appliance, choose Cafe, select Countertop Appliances, choose Espresso, and Manual Espresso. Since we've already entered Wi-Fi setup mode, we'll tap Next. Then enter the password found on the label at the back of the machine. Select the Wi-Fi network beginning with GE module that corresponds to your machine, and go back to the app and tap Next. Now, choose your home Wi-Fi network's name, enter its password, and tap Connect. Once it's set up, it may ask you to update the unit's firmware, which can take 15 to 30 minutes. Now we can go into Customize Your Drinks, and you can adjust the grind time, water volume, and water temperature settings for single and double shots individually. Grind times can be set from 9.5 seconds to 16, brew volumes from 3 quarters to 1.5 ounces, and brew temperatures from 194 degrees to 208.4 degrees Fahrenheit. If these seem like strange increments, it's because the adjustments are actually made in centigrade, then converted to Fahrenheit. The only difference in the double shot settings is that the volume can be set from 1.5 to 3 ounces. The other settings have the same value ranges. You can also change the hot water settings from 4 to 8 ounces and set the temperature to 149 or 167 degrees Fahrenheit, which is odd because that's not very hot and the default value is 176 degrees Fahrenheit. When I dispensed and measured the hot water, it is indeed close to that temperature, so I decided to leave these values unchanged. The app has a descale countdown reminder in liters, but outside of these two functions, there isn't much else. The manual also indicates water hardness levels can be set, though I couldn't find those settings in the current app version. Alternatively, you can set the water volume for espresso shots manually by pressing and holding their brew buttons respectively and releasing when the desired volume has been dispensed, or just the grind time for a single shot by pressing and holding the grind button. However, the grind time for a double shot can only be changed in the Smart HQ app. If you do sync the machine with the app, it can also send you push notifications when the water tank is empty, 
and when the bean hopper has been removed. Since the machine is only semi-automatic and there are a lot of manual, time-sensitive steps a person has to perform at the machine, I understand why the app doesn't have more smart functionality like voice controls or auto-brew timers. Now, I enjoy cappuccinos a bit more than straight-up espresso shots, so I'm going to steam about 125 milliliters of milk in the included pitcher. You can see the lowest marked level starts at 150 milliliters, and it goes up to 300 milliliters in increments of 50. Then with the wand pointed into the drip tray, turn the dial to steam to start preheating. The wand will clear out some water before it starts producing steam. When steam starts to come out, turn the dial back to the middle to pause operation. Extend out the steam wand, touching only the rubber handle as the metal will be hot. Sink the wand into your milk and turn the knob back to steam. It takes a bit of practice to get a good vortex going, but you'll be able to hear the air being added to the milk and see it starting to foam. Heat the milk just until the pitcher becomes hot enough to be uncomfortable to touch. When you're done, be sure to wipe the steam wand off with a damp cloth. Now you can add your steamed milk to your espresso shot for a homemade cappuccino. Wow, that's just like from the coffee shop. As for the cup warmer on top, you can warm your shot glasses face up, but for double walled glasses, I recommend face down, since otherwise the heat won't transfer to the surface that the espresso touches. The nice part about the grinder is that the wide range in sizes allows the grounds to be used for more than just espresso, so larger grounds could be used in a French style press or drip coffee machine, and very fine grounds for Turkish brew or dusting cakes and cooking. Do be careful about using too small a grind as this can clog the machine. So if no liquid is produced when you hit the brew button, try using a slightly larger grind size. Depending on your usage, you'll need to run the clean mode to descale the unit of mineral deposits every 3 to 6 months, and you can start this mode by holding down the double and grind buttons together for several seconds. Overall, once you get the process down and have set the amounts you want for grounds and water volume, pulling consistent, great tasting espresso shots is relatively easy after that. The dual walled pressurized porter filter baskets are great if you don't want to practice achieving the perfect tamping technique, and while the single walled baskets require a bit more skill and effort, they allow for greater control and adjustment for those that desire it. If you like making espresso at home and want to save a little counter space by combining your coffee grinder and espresso machine into one, the Cafe Bellissimo can do just that. Plus, it steams milk and produces on-demand hot water at the touch of a button. I hope you enjoyed this review. You can ask me any questions in the comments. I'll put a link to the product in the description below. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and join me next time.